Hey guys, welcome to Kid Missing TV. I screwed up. <laughs> First to admit it, I um, did this video yesterday, then I accidentally deleted it. I was feeling so crappy. <coughs> I was done editing the other videos and totally forgot this one. So, it's going up today. <laughs> um, August 10th, 1975, eight-year-old Helen Bailey from Great Bar, Birmingham, England, was abducted and murdered. Um, originally, a coroner's inquest determined that she died by accident or <coughs> just a prank gone wrong. Years later, in 2012, they had another coroner look at everything and he said, Scar was stabbed in the throat twice. Through the jugular, yeah, they may be shallow wounds, but this was a homicide. So, again, she was eight years old. She was found in kind of in the woods by the, a search team that her father was in. I can't imagine what that man went through emotionally being on the, the search team that found his daughter. There were different teams searching the area. Um, and she was found the next day. Uh, it was 6.30 the next morning. I just, I can't imagine. She was seen walking through an underpass of the M6. Now, when you hear the M6 or the M5 or whatever, that is like saying the I-86, you know? If you hear the M6 or the M5, um, I believe it means motorway, and it's the equivalent of, you know, we don't use the letter, but it's I-495, which means interstate. So it's kind of the same idea as our interstates. We use an I, they use an M. <coughs> so they did a second inquest in 2019 and came up with a suspect, a resident of Tamworth, um, his family home was right near where she was found, and he knew details only the killer should have known. Um, a John Sir was the prime suspect, and um, he had been in his late twenties at the time of the murder. At the time of her death, he had been known as Kenneth Etchells, but had since changed his name. He had been sentenced to life in prison in 1991 for the attempted murder of his own mother, whom he had severely injured with a hammer and whom died of pneumonia nine months later. Probably due to her, injury, her inability to move after her injuries. In July 2019, he lost a legal bid to his right to anonymity to remain in force prior to his being ordered to testify at the legal, legal hearings, the um, inquest. 
into Bailey's death. Now, a coroner's inquest, I mean, we do them, but not very often. Um, it's kind of an old world thing. Um, but over there, a coroner's inquest is kind of like a grand jury here. Um, kind of the same thing. Not only was she stabbed in her jugular vein, but she was first, like, n not to the point that she wasn't alive, but I'm assuming to, to the point that she was knocked out. She had petechial hemorrhaging. And the first coroner thought that maybe her neck wound had come from a tree branch because he thought it was shallow. It actually wasn't quite as shallow as he thought. And um, although the jugular's not far in, nor is the carotid, so it wouldn't be that difficult. However, so the second coroner understood. He wasn't judging the first coroner at all. He was saying, this is what misled him, you know? And he didn't apparently notice the petechiae and the... Sometimes it takes a little while for that to come up, in fairness. If you looked at her right away, it might not have been as noticeable. You know, and the pictures were taken and, you know, it was more noticeable. Um, the DEI are little broken blood vessels in the face and her forehead, her eyelids. Um, those areas and um, so yeah so it ended up that the verdict was unlawful killing at a second inquest <coughs> <coughs> hmm. like I said unfortunately they didn't have enough evidence you know actual physical evidence against that man to arrest and indict him. So we're still left with an unsolved case, but at least the potential predator is in jail. And he was rearrested at one point from the jail and brought to the police station for questioning. And he gave them information only the killer would know. But it just wasn't enough, you know, and plus he had spent time in a mental hospital and he, and he told them that and any good lawyer is going to plead insanity, you know, not guilty by reason of insanity or mental disease or defect and get him off anyway. It's like, are you kidding me? What the, that's what a good lawyer would do. So and I get it. I, that's a lawyer's job. You know, it, it's But fortunately, like I said, he's in jail for life. Um, it's just at the cost of someone else, you know? So. Hopefully, they can get some DNA evidence or something off of clothing or something. 
to nail him before he dies in jail. Because again, this was 1975. It was right after I turned a year old. <laughs> Actually, <clears throat> it was the 10th. Turned a year on the 4th and my parents had their second anniversary on the 7th. So, yeah. That's a problem. That it's been that long because it's been 49 years. I don't have phone numbers for this case because, well, it's, it's in the United Kingdom. But I can tell you if you're in the United Kingdom and you know something about this case, anything, call 999. He'll direct you. Um, 999, by the way, for those of you not in the United Kingdom, is 911. Well, it's their equivalent of 911. Um, here in the US and in Canada, we use 911. They use 999. <coughs> so. You know, so that's all I can tell you to do. And they'll direct you where to call from there. Oh, call the Birmingham police or the um, middle, uh, they called her little girl blue because she was all dressed in blue. Um, she had gone in and taken a, a, a nap, uh, not a nap, a bath because she got all dirty playing with her friends. And then she went back outside to play with her brother and her friends, all dressed in blue. Blue shirt, blue shorts, blue shoes, and they called her little girl blue. So, so what was the name of the police department? West Midlands Police. You can also call them, but I don't have a number for them. Thank you so much for joining me. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And I just pray for this family. What her dad went through. Being with the search party that found her. I just can't. I, I can't even begin to imagine that. I mean, the pain of losing your child and having your child's life be taken by another I can't even say human being, because no human being would take the life of a child. <coughs> and I'm running out of voice. Yeah. So. Anyway, thank you so much. God bless you. And I will see you, well, tomorrow for uh, Doe Friday because I messed up. And I am so sorry about that. Today, I will edit this one first. So that doesn't happen. <laughs> Bye, guys.